Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Digitalization is an increasingly important aspect of any industry. Because of social media, mobile, and IoT, this influx of data is causing companies to rethink their digital strategy in order to drive innovation. I'm Bernie Cassidy, and I'm here with Vishal Anand, who focuses on data platform strategy. Vishal, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Bernie. So to kick things off, Vishal, where do you see digital heading, and how can companies capitalize on this? Uh, it's an amazing topic because content and digitalization is the nucleus for any organization. Think about it, if you don't have content, how can you make decisions? How can you, we're in a connected world these days, so how do we connect with our customers, our internal, external stakeholders? We need some sort of digital platform. Today, if you don't have one, you might not be in business. So if you think about the new era now, because technology never hits a finish line, it's always evolving, and digitalization is at the next iteration of its era. Every 10 years, you get a new iteration of digitalization or content or, or the web. Everything is maturing. So the first iteration was Web.10. What was that about? This was in the 90s. It was a static page. You had a browser, and you got on the website, and you would surf, right? The next stage, which took about almost 10 years, was Web 2.0, which is social media, the Facebook, the Twitters of the world. And then now this next generation, which is Web 3.0, which is getting baked in now is all data driven. So it's all about semantics. So the next generation in a nutshell in terms of what digitalization is going to be is I've got all my content and I'm great at publishing it, but I want to personalize that data for you, Bernie. Bernie, I want to understand your personalization, your life in terms of what you like or not like and provide personal content for you. How do you do that? You have to have a data platform. You have to have an infrastructure that can deal with it. So organization, the chief data uh, digital officers, he or she understands they got to tackle this influx of amount of information. The information is coming from all different angles, all different sizes and types. So traditionally, the platforms would never lend itself because it was one container, a relational database that was capturing all this information. But now you have information from social media. A good example is Netflix. You've watched Netflix before? I do, I watch Netflix quite a bit. What is Netflix doing? It's driving that engine personally for you. It's asking, you watch this, well, th you would be interested in this. All of that data is being dri mined and driven consistently and constantly. Again, it's the platform, it's the data platform, Bernie, what we're talking about. So moving ahead, if you, if you think about, as I talked about the iteration of the web, you have devices now. These devices are your mobile phone. Correct. Uh, you have Internet of Things, you have home devices, like for example, you've got Alexa, you talk to Alexa. Yes, all the all time. All of that information is being captured and learned. So the next iteration besides being data-driven platform is intelligence. I want to make logic, as I said. So artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, autonomous, all of that becomes an assembly line in order to be effective in delivering content more data-driven, more personal to you. And what's important to recognize that if you don't, it, you cannot have AI, machine learning, if you don't have the data handy. So the platform has to be there in order to be um, successful. So this is really just a stepping off point, if you will. So how can companies then capitalize on this opportunity as they go forward? Absolutely, I think if you look at organization, let's flip to the telco organization. The telco organization has morphed into a media company. If you go back in time, a telco organization was all about Here's a phone, even cable, and that was it. Now, now you think about their media giant. They're, they're the digital mecca of the world. They're collecting information from all over the place, from the network standpoint, from all the GPS, location services. They're doing all sorts of analytics. But the challenge is that their systems and infrastructure are legacy. Are they looking at themselves more as content companies than as communication companies? I believe so. I think the communication becomes a foundation because data has to move around. So they're providing a, a um, wire to your cell phone, right? Yes. As your cell phone is, as you're interacting with your cell phone, that information is being captured. But just think about this, the 5G network's coming. The 5G network is going to provide near real-time interaction. So when you're near real-time interaction, what happens? You've got massive amount of data coming. So if the back office system, the infrastructure is not there, how are you going to mine it? Yes. How are you going to have a data scientist figure out you know, some sort of forecasting on a network barrier? Let's say your network is being saturated. How can, I mean, the scientists can figure this stuff out. So they can do some analysis and come up with predictions. Absolutely. So now what happens is if you look at the internal organization and you start to realize 
how weak the infrastructure and integration is around, companies, for example, telcos, are shifting to the cloud. And cloud is a vehicle. That the cloud is a vehicle because it provides efficiencies. I can go to market. I can start building. I don't need to wait. Let's go. I can work on my business. So what we provide from a platform as a service is a suite of data platforms for each iteration I talked about because these are all workload patterns that come at you. It's not one container, it's an entire ecosystem. Right. You're going to hear something called Hadoop. You're going to hear something in memory. You're going to hear something called streaming data. So, um, you know, and then you have the, the mass amount of data lake you've, you've heard, right? Yes, data lakes I've heard quite a bit about. Can, can I just back up a second? Did I hear you say that you shouldn't focus on the cloud? No, no, absolutely. So th that's why you're pivoting to the cloud because the focus has shifted due to efficiency and, and uh, to tools. So if I could tell you, Bernie, you've got an organization. I'll give you every tool possible to build your innovation and your organization. That's, that's the vehicle that we want to provide. Uh, so the vehicle itself is services. Right. So if you look at when you buy a vehicle, you buy options. Yes. And, and the way we lend ourselves is we are the top top service companies. So when it comes to data platform, we're number one. When it comes to integration, we're number one. When it comes to application, industry specific, we're number one. When it comes to security, we're right there. You know, it's, it's the suite of products you get that journey within your cloud versus other vendors. This sounds great. Vish, where do you see autonomous fitting into this? It sounds like a perfect strategy and a perfect fit. Absolutely, I, I think uh, it's quite clear that the industry is being driven and, and molded within this whole autonomous architecture. Over here at Oracle, our thought process is that we have to take advantage of autonomous across the suite of our products. As I talked about, pivoting to the cloud for organization, but the experience you get within the cloud is even more important, and I'll tell you why. And autonomous is just one token of that. The fact of the matter is that as an organization, you're able to move to the cloud. You don't worry about upgrades and n the latest, greatest systems I got to purchase. You're buying into the experience in terms of using the tools, but yet behind the scenes they get upgraded. So the next services that we're offering, a suite of services, not on just on the data stack, but also at the applications stack, is the autonomous component. Now the autonomous component is all about artificial intelligence. Now think about our, our, our um, angle here from, from our organization is that we own the intellectual property. We, we've, we've invested a lot of research development in that. So there, just like a vehicle, there's a lot of metrics that come out of it. Right. So on right. a data platform, a lot of metrics, key performance indicators, for example, you know, your miles per hour, your braking, all of that. We know that, and based on that knowledge, we can incorporate and inject autonomous algorithms, and that's what we're doing. So autonomous is going to be part of the first cut is the database, where we're taking out all the labor, all the operational costs. Just imagine this, you load your data and don't worry about all the other stuff, patching, securing. All the complexity we've taken out is to give it back to the experience, to you, the customer. So now, now start to move up the stack. Analytics is coming out mm -hmm. with autonomous. Yes. Okay, our platform and services will have all these different platform and services will have autonomous. So you have a native experience across the board. Now, when you start to align it with the digital strategy, think about the influx of information coming and you're not worrying about how do I need to do performance tuning? Do I have enough resources? Do I have enough memory? Uh, do, I have, do I have the right hardware? You know, do I have this, the infrastructure to move the data around? Correct, correct. These are things that sometimes organizations miss. They build all this stuff, but they realize the pipe is too small to even move the data. It becomes almost a second thought, which causes a laggard improvement and, and, and innovation. Yeah, yeah. Now what do you do at that point? You, gotta, you have to strip out all the, inf you know, the underlying infrastructure? No, this is why the cloud vehicle is so important. And at Oracle, we've been developing and producing data processing for I mean, decades. Correct. This is what we do, but now with our integration processes, analytics processes on the cloud, we have the most viable solution in the industry. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind. And autonomous speaks innovation. It speaks simpli simplicity. Um, so I, I think it's a, it's a great strategy for us. I think customers are going to enjoy it, and uh, they're just going to have an incredible experience moving forward. I can also see where you, know, you can refocus your assets and your resources onto things that are more important that you can't uh, uh, automate, such as security. I'll tell you, security, I mean, data privacy has been in the news lately, and I can't say enough that we secure it all the way from the application all the way to where the data rests. Again, it's our IP, it's our intelligence, it's our R&D. We understand how important 
in, you know, um, security is. And if you look at a chief digital officer, he or she, that's top. Yes. Security is always top. So when you pivot to the cloud, the security officer is he or she also looks at that area as well. Yeah. And that's that's something that we take very seriously. So not just being secured, we, we're performance, our underlying infrastructure, Bernie, is the next generation infrastructure. So when we built the next generation infrastructure, uh, we thought about all the, the stuff that's going to be coming ahead. You know, what organization are going to be challenged by? And we built containers, we built bare metals, and we're the only company that can encompass software and hardware together. So if you look at the Apple model, the Apple model experience you get is because they control the hardware and software. And control does not mean here that we're going to be, it's the experience we want to provide. Right. You know, and then if you, no offense to Android, but Android, there's no control over there. So when you talk about control, you're not talking about vendor lock-in. Exactly. So we give you the ability to be on-premise with that same look and feel from a software perspective. Then we pivot you to the cloud, and then we can also put a um, hardware as a cloud architecture on-premise as well. So you have a hybrid architecture. Options are always better. I'd actually like to go back to what you said earlier and talk specifically about the telecommunication sure. industry. How are they going to monetize this? I'll tell you, I mean, telco is, they're, they're obviously an or, enormous organization, not just being a telephone company, but a media giant, as we yes. discussed. And the whole digital strategy for them is extremely important. Uh, in order for them to be effective and leveraging the next wave of digitalization, such as we talked about autonomous, artificial intelligence, the, there's a lot of things that they can monetize. Just think about you using, I don't know what vendor you use, it's fine, but you're constantly interacting as self-service. Think about the digitalization on your phone. You can change your billing, you can change your products. All of that is readily available. It tells you how much data you've used, right? Your I vendor. can look at it at home, I can look at it on my mobile device. Exactly, so th that's, that's, uh, that's obviously a next pivot of the next generation, but it's going to be more data driven in terms of analytics. They're going to provide you with more analytics information to prove to you more customer service, better customer service. Imagine that you were going through a hardship around your vendor. Maybe the phone calls were dropping and you're right. calling customer service. This new engine can start to look at that area, let's just call it artificial intelligence, and say, wait, Bernie's been calling 10 to 15 times to our customer service. What's going on here? Something's up. Something's up. We need to figure this thing out, right? And they, do we see that trend el el elsewhere as well? Yes. So just think about that. Think about the bandwidth. How much bandwidth the millennials are using these days? Correct. I mean, millennials don't. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't sit and watch live TV. No. They're either streaming, right? They're on Snapchat, or, or or I mean, everyone's doing something on a mobile or some sort of device. Correct. So imagine just figuring out intelligently how do we broadcast that bandwidth whenever it's needed at these peak time. That could be analyzed through data scientists. Think about drones, and I mean, this has nothing to do with digital. Uh, digitalization, but everything around content data to me is digitalization. Well, it's data, data, data and content, how you use yeah. it. Yeah, think about drones going up there and looking at the towers to figure out there's issues. Right. Through some sort of uh, binoculars with them, you know, VR. Right, right. Just think about that information is coming back. Well, this doesn't look right. Let's go focus in that area. How much time does that spend? How much money do they save? I mean, there's a lot in chat boxes. Mm -hmm. You're no longer talking to a human being. You know, you're talking to some sort of computer that's understanding and learning. I mean, these are the things that, that's already been deployed or, and looking forward to deploy. So digitalization is going to be all over the place, but monetizing it, putting the right platform, putting the right hardware, software, again, I'm going to go back to us. We're the only company that can provide the software and hardware experience. And I think it's going to be uh, extremely important for the organization to, to look at, you know, our solution versus others out there. Well, that's excellent. Vish, thank you so very much for sharing these topics and this information with us. I'm sure the people who have visited us today will have um, some questions for you, and we can address that at any time, either in person or online. No, thank you for having me. You're very welcome, Thank you, Vish. Bernie. Thank you.